in this electric snowmobile build. In this uh, episode I build this tubular frame who is 10 kilos lighter than the Rex 2 chassis. I also saw some issues with the uh, placing of the motor and the battery. And uh, yes, that's all. Uh, I hope you get inspired and maybe so much inspired that you start your own project. So hope you enjoy. I have also a summary down here at the time when it starts. So enjoy. As you saw in the last episode, I uh, gave up on this, uh, tried to get this aluminum uh, chassis together with my tube chassis. Uh, I figured out it will, it will be too much uh, fixing plates and uh, things to get this connected to the motor and uh, controller battery. So I, I will ditch this one. I will use the front end with those uh, fixings for the the brackets for the wishbones and the steering column and etc. But uh, I will, I started, I will use tubes and uh, I will use this as a mock up to take measurements and all the important measurements and uh, also so I can uh, make a copy of these uh, fixing points for the drive shaft. And, uh, yes, that's what I will do. And uh, in the end, this will be easier. I will have much more space for batteries and uh, also uh, better fixing points for motor. Yep. Well, I measured uh, the aluminum uh, chassis in the front and I, now I made some uh, two pieces so I can uh, get all the mounting points now I've done uh, both sides of this uh, tubular frame. And as you can see, it fits quite good into this original frame chassis. And now I will tack it to my jig and uh, try to measure so I get everything in, in, in everything gets straight and also in uh, the correct position and everything. frame is start to look like a frame or chassis. I, I just uh, got this attached. I'm gonna make some uh, plate here to, so I can fit it and then I will try to figure out the, the riding height. Well I've done the, you can see here, I've done some parts for the seating. It's a bit different design maybe but I think uh, I want to keep the weight down so I, I made it like this because I think the structure will be uh, strong enough and also if I uh, I gonna bend the aluminum tunnel here and uh, make fixing points so I get it stable. Now I'm working on the front end and uh, try to make this as strong as possible without putting too much metal in place. Uh, I need this uh, fixing point at the rear of this uh, 
skeleton front. But uh, I'm not sure about how to make this the best way and also connect everything together. So that's what I'm planning to trying to figure out now. Now I've done some brackets for the seating and also for the steering column. Now I'm thinking about this uh, front end, how I'm going to solve it the best way without it getting too heavy. But I think I have some ideas by putting a, a plate here, two millimeters, and then two millimeters here, three millimeters for the wishbone, and then uh, one millimeter here on both sides. Then it would be the lightest way and also the strongest because I have these points here have to be quite durable. Plates in the front end and it's finished. You can see here I have done the upper and rear wishbones bracket. And, uh, it's like that. It's working. Now it's time for these uh, plates. We're gonna hold the uh, drive shaft on both sides, and there I must make a template out of the Rex 2 chassis. And I will make this in two millimeter plates, and I'm gonna switch that one for the brake caliper to the top, so I would can make a more narrow plate than uh, some flanges to reinforce it. And I will do the same but to the other side because when you turn the gear case almost upside down. Well no, standing straight up because of the fixing point of the motor and also so I can get as much space as possible for the battery pack. Well here I'm drilling the holes for the caliper and uh, Lower here, I will drill the hole for the drive shaft, but I don't have that size on this uh, B metal drill. But it's fun here because it looks like Mickey Mouse. Now I've done the bracket on one side of the drive shaft, and uh, this is for uh, this Mickey Mouse section is for the caliper. So it fits like that. And you see on the back side here, so the caliper, uh, the problem I made it like that uh, so the brakes would get uh, cooling. And uh, now I will drill some holes here to make it lighter. And uh, also made it to fit like that. Yeah. Yeah, like that. And the flanges here is to make it uh, more uh, durable, or stronger. So I will make some holes and then I will uh, do the other side. I have to make some modifications to the gear box, gear case, so I can uh, fit this uh, belt drive later on. And also I must plan where to put the motor so I get the correct angle from the gear case. Now I've done some modifications on this uh, gear box and. Uh, my initial plan was to put the motor up here, but uh, I changed my mind. I think uh, the weight distribution would be much better if I put the motor here in front where I plan to put the batteries. Uh, it's easier for me to, to organize batteries in a flat position and also on the other side here on the motor. I think I will have much better... Uh, way center of gravity if I put the motor here and then I can place the batteries in, in this area and uh, maybe flatten them out the battery pack and uh, I will use this uh, gearbox it's gonna be like this and now I have to uh, measure so I get the proper position on this one the absolute best way would be if I can put the, the axle from the motor in here, maybe remove more parts of this one and then I will have a hole and then I 
maybe I can use the the cover from the original gear case. I'll, I'll put the tape here so I can see the, the center of the motor and then I try to align the, the gear gear case and uh, like that and then if I place it like that I can fit two of these holes underneath here and also yeah I think it will work now I fitted the brackets for the boogie suspension here is in, in the front and uh, here is in the rear with the support wheels from the return and this is also the, the bracket for the rear suspension now I'm gonna start with these uh, plates for the drive shaft and this is the plate for uh, chain case and I also tacked bolts to fit the, the, the gear chain case and uh, I will tack it and then I will <coughs> fit, fit the drive shaft to see if everything is uh, correct and aligned as you can see I've tacked uh, both plates and it's uh, 430 millimeters from each surfaces and uh, I will try to fit the drive shaft but first I must uh, do some cutting on the gear case because this uh, tube here is uh, some millimeters outside of the surface of the plate and it must be like that because I want it centered so I must make some uh, more modifications to the gearbox Well, here you can see I've done some uh, modifications to this uh, gear case <coughs> and uh, I probably have to make it uh, more, uh, what you say, seal it, seal it, so it doesn't come too much to inside, but <coughs> here you can see, like that, and uh, it doesn't matter if the shaft of the engine is not 100% lined here because I can I can adjust it. <coughs> I think it, the little more measure here was 135. I have to be it was quite tight down here, so I have to move this up a bit. But now I'm gonna bolt this in position, and then I will try to fit the drive shaft, and then I'm gonna weld it in place. <laughs> So I can have it 100%. And I also welded all these uh, joints. So uh, if things move, it has already been moving. So the drive shaft will not be affected if I was to weld this later on. Well, here we can see the gear case and uh, the shaft in position. I haven't tacked it yet, but it seems to be uh, quite good. Um, maybe I should measure from the front. But it's, uh, it's not uh, any, it's not in any, any, what you say, tension. So I think I'll tack it there. <coughs> I will measure, but I have measurements here. You can see the center line to the center line on the frame and have the same on the other side. And they are aligned. So I don't think there is any strange, strange. See here it's perfect. And also on the other side. So I think I'll take it there. And then I will put the uh, track band on and the boogie and then, yeah. Okay, it's time to check the weight. The original chassis was uh, 30 kilos. Now it is not complete yet, and uh, I still miss, I left some parts in here, but it's gonna be interesting anyway. It's not that heavy. But it's 
it's only 20 kilos. It's 10 kilos lighter than the original. Well, that's quite good. Here is the frame naked. I took apart uh, the front end. Now I'm gonna do some welding. kilos. Okay, short summary. I, I used the front end from the Rex2 chassis and then I just uh, built this tubular frame to fit to the front part. And I also made uh, plates for the BRP drive shaft and uh, I also used the original gear case. And I'm not sure if I will uh, rebuild it for uh, belt drive or just use this 430 chain and then I will use the original tensioner. This chassis was uh, 20 kilos so it's 10 kilos lighter than the Rex 2 chassis. I miss some aluminum parts just for some snow protection. It's not that many kilos and there is also nothing, no footrests fitted so far. Here you can see the, the brake and uh, here you can also see I'm planning to just make a 2mm plate here with a pattern for the ME motor and then uh, maybe I'm, I'm getting somewhere here I must just cut in this gear case so I can get the drive shaft from the electric motor into this and then a chain grip belt or chain transmission. Here you can see all the plates to fit the aluminum front.